Hi, welcome to the first in a series about saws and sawing, where I'm going to be talking about the saws that I use, the differences between Western and Japanese saws, uh, how to use saws, uh, pretty much anything to do with saws and sawing. Hope you enjoy it. Today I'm going to be talking about the saws I use to make straight cuts. And they range from something about this size up to something about this size. Now there are camps that say Japanese saws are best, camps that say Western saws are best, and there are people like myself who see both Japanese and Western saws as capable of equally good results. Now before I get started showing you these saws, I'll just tell you the reason why I have a range of both Western and Japanese is because I find mixing up the use of, of the saws, uh, the push stroke and the pull stroke, the different stances and techniques, means that I end up with less backache. If I spent the whole day cutting tenons with a western tenon saw, no doubt I'd have problems. Whereas if I mix it up, I use the, the western tenon saw for a, a couple of tenons and I move on to the uh, Dazuki saw or the Kataba and cut some tenons with those, keep mixing it up and I'm far better at the end of the day. So let's take a look now at this range from small to large and where the Japanese and Western fit in between each other. So down at the small end I've got my small Dazuki dovetail saw and my Western dovetail saw. You can get smaller saws, they'd be off in that direction down there. I've never come across a reason for buying any smaller saws than these for the work I do but just be aware that they are available. This small Dazuki dovetail saw is excellent for small and fine work. It's almost equivalent to the small dovetail saw that you get in the West. But a major difference, as you'll find across the whole range, is the thickness of the saw plate. This saw plate is about 60% thicker than the Japanese which means when you're cutting you've got to remove more material so it does mean at the end of the day there's more effort so just why are the blades of western saws a bit thicker than Japanese saws? well it comes down to really the way metal reacts when it's being pushed or pulled when it's pushed it wants to bend when it's pulled it wants to get straight get straight, become straight and when you're sawing you want the saw plate to stay straight so what we do is put a back on there which helps to stiffen it and we also keep a slightly thicker saw plate that tends to keep it nice and straight on the Japanese style saws we've got a back which helps to keep it straight but also because we're pulling the blade it's under tension that also helps to keep it uh, keep it straight so it can be that little bit thinner. Now this dovetail saw will cope with dovetails a little bit bigger than the small Dazuki so I have a, a larger Dazuki and that does some excellent work as well again it's got the thinner saw plate. Moving up in scale um, I've still got the Dazuki dovetail saw included here because Part of the job this can do is small tenons and I've also moved on there to the tenon saw but you'll see here the depth or the, the width of the saw plate up to the back is greater than it is on the Dazuki saw so to cope with deeper tenons I also include the Kataba and this one only has a very stumpy back so all of this part of the blade which is thicker to give it the stiffness it needs that can cope with deep tenons moving on again the Kataba is also a partial equivalent to the western panel saw and this is a 10 point cross cut saw could equally be a rip cut because there's no back on this um, it's basically down to the size and the thickness of the plate which doesn't stop it from flexing which means we can't be so accurate with it 
but um, allows us to make those deeper cuts. And also the length and the coarser teeth mean we can make quicker cuts. I've moved up again a little bit here. I've still got the western panel saw here, the cross cut saw. I've now included the Ryoga saw, which is very distinctive because it has two teeth lines, tooth lines, cross cut side and a rip cut side. So this is the equivalent really of two panel saws, both the rip cut and the cross cut. Now it's also a very capable saw in the, in the ripping mode and so I think it's almost equivalent to a, what I've got here is a six point rip saw. Uh, this is a, the largest saw that I generally use in the workshop. It's only 24 inches so you could quite equally say it's a, either a half hand or still a panel saw. And I think that that sort of size saw and the panel saw can be replaced in the workshop with a Ryoba. To move up from this rip saw, 24 inch rip saw, there should be in here, if we're looking at the whole sort of scale of saws, um, a hand saw, a rip hand saw. And they tend to be 28 inches or more. Um, I don't have one because, first of all, mechanically I'm large enough to cope with one. I've got that range of movement, but physically I feel much more comfortable working with the slightly shorter 24 inch. If it comes to big cross cut work though, I've got this big boy. Now, I don't have a Japanese equivalent to this, um, but it shows the sort of range of sizes that you can get in saws. This one is the biggest, probably, one man saw you're going to find, western wise. Um, it comes with a second handle, which will be attached here for two handed use, but that handle can also be attached on the front so that you can use it with a partner. So that gives you a reasonably good idea of the range of saws I use in the workshop uh, on a day to day basis for straight cuts. Now, uh, I have said that if I'm doing a lot of the same sort of cutting, I'll use both Western and Japanese saws uh, because that helps my back. But if you don't have back problems, you can just obviously get away with either being Western or Japanese, or maybe having Japanese for small stuff, Western for medium stuff, and uh, Japanese for coarse stuff, or any mixture of that sort of thing. How do you choose for any particular job? Really, it's got to be down to your preference for the way you work. If you prefer the pull stroke, uh, maybe on fine work, then go for Japanese. Uh, if you prefer to be pushing through your cuts when you're doing larger cutting, then maybe go for a Western style. It's very difficult to tell you what you're going to find most comfortable. Now, the best way to decide uh, which one you prefer is to try out the different methods and the different saws. And for that, you either have to find uh, a nice local tool supplier who will let you try things out, or go to a woodworking show and try things there. Something I do suggest to people who are just getting into woodworking for the first time, uh, they're not quite sure whether or not hand sawings for them or not, is get yourself a cheap combination panel saw, like this one. You can with care do all of the jobs that these saws do with one of these. It is coarse, so you've got to be prepared for some cleanup work with chisels afterwards, but it's cheap and it'll give you an idea of what hand sawing is like in the workshop. And from that, you should be able to decide whether or not you want to pursue um, manual saws. If you do, then the next one after this would be probably something for finer work, and then you're going to decide, shall I go Western, shall I go Japanese? Because this is a Western style, I would probably say go for a Dazuki saw. That gives you um, some finer control on, um, on fine work, accurate work. It also gives you then the chance of testing out 
how to use a pull saw as opposed to the push saw that you've got here. That will probably make up your mind whether or not uh, you prefer Western or Japanese. And from that point on, you can pick your saws accordingly. Next time I'm going to be using these saws to show you how to saw, how to start and finish your cuts, how to hold your work, and how to make your sawing more accurate. Following on from that, I'll be covering saws for curved work. Now there's all this information and more in some new pages on my website, so do go and have a look at that. And if you want to see the future videos in this series and you're not subscribed already, then you know what you've got to do. So, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye! Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe, and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!